This public service program has been prepared and presented by Crime Stoppers with the cooperation of Michigan law enforcement authorities and the family and friends of the victims of the crimes described in the hope that viewers will call in with tips which will help solve these crimes in southeastern Michigan. Crime Stoppers relies upon information provided by Michigan law enforcement authorities in the production of this programming. Crime Stoppers doesn't assume responsibility to update this public service presentation as featured crimes are solved. A father who just dropped off his three children at school is shot and killed a short time later. We need some tips on this one. It all happened this week. It's Fox 2 and Crime Stoppers, Michigan's Most Wanted. On Monday morning, April 15th, tax day, this senseless murder was on Detroit's east side at Peerless and Casino. Police say a father of three, 32-year-old Dion Tinsley, had just dropped his three children off at school. He was shot and killed while sitting behind the wheel of his SUV. Tinsley's mother and his stepfather say they believe Tinsley was the victim of violent road rage. Car was blocking the streets and he wanted to get by it. Guy said something to him, and I guess words were exchanged, and the guy got out and shot him. You, know, you shouldn't have to get shot because you don't move your car. He was a good son. He always came and did everything he wanted to do for me. But he ain't never done nothing to nobody. Nothing. Who shot and killed Dion Tinsley? Call 1 800 Speak Up. No mother should have to bury their only child. My child will not be here to celebrate his only child's birthday this week. It is hard to, to, to struggle through the weeks without thinking about him. And he was a good person. He, he didn't deserve to be shot and killed in the streets of Holland Park. His family would miss him very much. And it's just, it's, it's hard to believe that these persons is out here just being free to be able to do and to harm another family. And it's, it's, it's a tragedy. I just um, want anyone who knows something to speak up and contact the, the police department. Thank you. Um, my cousin was my big brother. He meant and still means the world to me and my family. I have so many great memories of him and I wasn't ready to end it yet. Um, I felt like someone ripped my heart out of my chest when I got the dreadful phone call that he passed. He was murdered. Right now I feel empty. I will always feel this way until I get answers about my brother's death. If anyone knows anything about what occurred on that day, please come forward. A lot of men feel like it's unnecessary, but it would mean the world to us. If you had anything to do with it, if you're responsible, please come forward and put my heart and my family's heart at ease. Thank you. A family cries out for justice, working in his own home in the middle of the afternoon. He's robbed and shot and killed. It's Fox 2 and Crime Stoppers, Michigan's Most Wanted. He was working in his own home in the middle of the afternoon. It was 2.30 p.m. January 13, 2013, on the 20,000 block of Goldburn near 8 Mile and Shaner, Detroit's northeast side. 42-year-old Sterling Bailey was doing carpentry work in his own home when he was surprised by someone with a gun. Bailey was the victim of an armed robbery. Sadly, the gunman did not stop with robbery. After stealing his money, Sterling Bailey was then shot and killed. Witnesses heard a gunshot and then saw a red Dodge Ram pickup driving away from the home. His family is destroyed with non-stop pain knowing the killer is still out there. Bailey's daughter Raquel has been haunted by her father's murder. Someone was there and someone heard something or someone knew something and someone may have saw something and I just need somebody to come for it because I just need closure. Who robbed and then shot and killed 42-year-old Sterling Bailey? Do the right thing. Call 1-800-SPEAK-UP and claim a $2,500 cash reward. 
It's been four months since a Detroit woman was murdered outside a liquor store. Right now, her killers are still out there. 57-year-old Charlene Anderson was leaving the Parkside Liquor Store on Detroit's east side when two men tried to rob her. She had nothing to give them, so they shot her in the chest. When she tried to call for help, the suspects shot her again, killing her. Anderson lived in an apartment complex across the street where everyone called her mom or auntie. But she also had three daughters of her own and ten grandchildren. She took anyone in her home. It don't matter if you was family or not. It didn't matter to her. She fed everyone. Um, everyone loved her. She didn't deserve this. My family didn't deserve this. You did not only just take my mama. You took my heart, my backbone, my soul. If you know anything about the murder of Charlene Anderson, call 1-800-SPEAK-UP. Crime Stoppers is offering a $2,500 reward for the tip that leads to an arrest. A mother is haunted for more than five years. Her son was shot and killed during the winter of 2007. There were two shooters. They now become Michigan's most wanted. Major Nelson was outside this party store on Fankel at Freeman, Detroit's west side. It was December 8, 2007, in front of this Coney on this sidewalk right here. 6.45 in the evening, Grimajor Nelson is standing here. Someone walks up and shoots him on December 8th of 07. Right after that, as he collapses, another man comes from this parking lot and also walks up and shoots Mr. Nelson. He fell in the parking lot. Grimajor Nelson could not recover from the gunshots. He was dead at the age of 34. The trail has since gone cold. Police are baffled why Nelson, who had never been in any trouble, would be the victim of a shooting. Could there have been a mistake? Was he not a target, but perhaps resembled someone else? Police need tips to close this case. Nelson's family misses him every day. His family was so important to him. He really loved his family. He was always around. He just loved doing things with his family. He always made everyone smile. And, you know, when you saw his smile, you knew everything would be okay. Grimajor Nelson's mother says his death has destroyed her. That's my child. I lost him. And he can't be replaced. We're all he had. And we're he's all we had. And I just want you to turn yourselves in. Please do that. Thank you. Another local mother is still looking for answers after her 22-year-old son was gunned down last September. Michael McKinnon borrowed his friend's truck to run an errand and told his family he'd be right back. Soon after he left, police heard gunshots and followed them to McKinnon's body. They found the young man dead in the street on Detroit's east side. Michael has 10 brothers and sisters. He spent time traveling with the circus and joined a church two weeks before his death. To know that to somebody just shot him in cold blood, you know, is, is unacceptable, you know, to me and my family. And we're just looking for some closure. Crime Stoppers is offering a $2,500 cash reward for information leading to an arrest. If you know who killed Michael McKinnon, call 1-800-SPEAK-UP. Well, it's time to solve a double murder in Waterford. Someone walked into a young couple's home in the middle of the night in July of 2005 and shot them both. Someone living in the area or even just walking in the area or living there on Brunswick Boulevard that night may not have come forward. This manhunt starts right now. It's Fox 2's Michigan's Most Wanted. I miss you. I love you. I just wish you, wish you were with us. We are so proud of her. And I guess as a big sister, that means a lot to a little sister to say I'm proud of you. And I was proud of her. July of 05, someone walked into their Waterford home here on the 5400 block of Brunswick Boulevard. In the middle of the night, the couple was executed as they slept side by side. 39-year-old Kenneth Cannell, Jr., 
and his girlfriend, 41-year-old Pamela Barnes, were both shot in the head. This was not a robbery, and no one has ever been arrested. A judge approved a search warrant, and Waterford Police joined Oakland County Forensic Investigators as they searched the property at West Buno Road in Milford. For now, investigators are not revealing what they were looking for or if they found anything. Just give yourself up. You know, you're going to be caught eventually. You can't hide. You know, just come forward and... Uh, Turn yourself in. You know, detectives and the police department, they're working hard, but we also know that it's all in God's timing and we have to find peace in that. It's been devastating and it doesn't get any easier, that's for sure. That was Jesse Cannell, Kenneth Cannell Jr.'s stepmom. These families are hurting, they need justice. We need tips to solve this case. Who killed Kenneth Cannell Jr. and his girlfriend Pamela Barnes in Waterford, July of 05? Crime Stoppers right now is offering a $2,750 reward. You won't give your name. Do the right thing. Pick up the phone and call 1 800 Speak Up. Well, it's been nearly six years now since a father from Southgate was killed. His murder is still unsolved. Anthony Johnson Jr. was shot April 22nd of 07 while driving along I-75 at Spring Wells in southwest Detroit. He was in a sky blue 1992 four-door Cutlass Supreme. The car had tinted windows. Someone opened fire. It was in broad daylight. There was a lot of traffic around and perhaps more witnesses have not come forward. Johnson was 20 years old. He left behind a fiance and two daughters. He was also getting ready to leave for basic training with the U.S. Army. When he left, he told me he loved me and he will be back. I didn't know it meant being back, meeting him in the promised land. It's almost six years later and it still feel like yesterday. My son was a man of God. He was a family man. He was a God-fearing man and he helped all those who are in need probably the one who pulled the trigger. Anthony's mother needs to know what happened. Who killed Anthony Johnson Jr.? Call 1-800-SPEAK-UP. Crime Stoppers is offering a $2,500 reward. Fox 2's Michigan's Most Wanted is profiling a case for a man wanted for a shooting in Highland Park on October 11th, 2012. This man fired a shot, wounding a 45-year-old woman at the Family Dollar on Woodward Avenue at Manchester Parkway in Highland Park. Of course, a detective from the Highland Park PD is Detective Paul Thomas, working hard to solve this case. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you, sir. What do you think happened here? Uh, on this particular date and time, an individual uh, appeared in a ski mask outside a family dollar store located in Highland Park. Uh, the individual with the mask fired numerous indiscriminate shots. Firing more than once? Yes. Several times? Several times. Uh, at that time, a 44-year-old woman was wounded and uh, is suffering some serious complications as a result of it, some serious health issues. Uh, the Highland Park Police Department is interested in solving this crime and removing this dangerous individual from the streets of our community. We're showing some video here. There's some broken glass. He's firing shots at the family dollar. She's hit. He's out in the parking lot shooting then. Did he walk up? Did he drive up? No, this individual approached on foot. Mm -hmm. and uh, fled on foot. Okay. Anything stolen? Nothing stolen. Uh, we actually have no motive uh, other than that he may be just a deranged individual armed with a handgun. Did our victim know him? No. None of the citizens knew him. Okay. Well, we saw the video there. We've got to find out who's behind this. They're looking for the shooter. Thank you, Detective Paul Thomas, for joining us. Keep up the good work. If you know what happened in Highland Park, it was in October. This 44-year-old woman, now 45, has survived, but she's been seriously wounded. Call Crime Stoppers. 1-800-SPEAK-UP. You took a life. You chose to treat her like an animal. And that's not right. Vernon Lope speaks out on behalf of his wife, Sandra. The 37-year-old mother of five children left Santino's Bar on Van Dyke at 1 a.m. on December 16th. She was walking home when she was hit by a vehicle. That driver continued on more than 600 feet, dragging Sandra under the vehicle. The driver eventually stopped. Investigators say someone got out of the vehicle and pulled Sandra Lope's body from underneath. Then the vehicle drove off. Sandra was discovered in the parking lot of a mobile home park on Van Dyke near Campground Road in Washington Township. 
Please, you know who did this, and you know who you are out there. You owe it to God, you owe it to me, you owe it to our family, and you owe it to our kids. You have to come forth. We have to have closure. What you did is just unbelievable. This should never happen to anyone, but how do you explain this to five young children? You know, it's not fair to us to have had to bury our sister. We should not be here. We should not have to do this. It's not fair that her children have to grow up without a mother now. The driver knew exactly what happened. There will be considerable damage to the right front passenger side of the car, just feet away from the driver. If somebody knows of a vehicle that may have some damage to the uh, front passenger side, um, that's information. Any little bit will help, and our investigators are going to follow up on every tip. To the person who killed my son, you hurt my soul, my heart, my life forever. Without God, I will be nothing. Somebody knows something. Someone saw something. A Detroit mother with a passion for helping others disappears. That was more than three months ago. Her car was found, but she's still missing. Fox 2's Alexis Wiley reports her family is now working with Crime Stoppers to find her. You don't know how it feels until it's you. It's a feeling. I can't describe it. 33-year-old Tamala Wells disappeared three months ago. Her family is trying to stay strong, but hope is hard to come by. I love you, Mama. Come home. Tamla left her house on the night of August 6th. Her boyfriend says he believed she was going to be with friends. Her mother says she spoke to her around 10.30 that night. She had no idea that was going to be the last time. As a mother, you can hear just a slight of a razzle, like she was just a tense upset about something. Tamla's car was just dumped in this neighborhood on Detroit's east side, miles away from her home. A few items of clothing were discovered inside, but Tamla was nowhere to be found. People just don't disappear. Someone that day saw something. And they're hoping that a $1,000 reward from Crime Stoppers will urge witnesses to come forward and end this family's suffering. The number to call? 1-800-SPEAK-UP. On Detroit's East Side, I'm Alexis Wiley, Fox 2 News. He was a father, son, and a brother, and this summer he was gunned down, shot and killed while sitting in his own car. It's Fox 2 and Crime Stoppers, Michigan's Most Wanted. In June 2012, Larry Green was sitting in his car across the street from the C-Note Lounge near Van Dyke and Seven Mile, Detroit's east side. Someone opened fire. Green, who worked as an auto mechanic, was a loving father, son, and brother. He was shot dead at the age of 28. The trail to find the killer has grown cold. Green's family is now making a plea for someone to call in a tip. I'm just asking. Uh, anyone for any information and, and the one who shot my son I know you'll see this I hope you do the right thing turn yourself in cuz someone gonna tell someone gonna let you know and, and we'll never stop looking for you who shot and killed 28 year old Larry Green there's a $2,500 reward you'll remain anonymous call 1-800 speak up I know the rules of the streets is you see and don't tell but somewhere, someday, somehow, it has to stop. Someone has seen something. Someone has heard something. It's hard sleeping at night, just knowing that he's not there. Um, his laughter, his smile, him being silly, him just being Cody.
I thought I wouldn't be able to make it through the night with all the grief and sorrow surrounding me. I want to know who did it. It was so cowardly and foolish and ignorant to take a great person's life who only tried to help people like him. This should make you angry. A high school student gunned down. A senseless crime. Your heart hurts for his mother who's asking for your help to find the killer. It's Fox 2 and Crime Stoppers, Michigan's Most Wanted. Jean Chambers, a student at Henry Ford High School, was simply walking down the street with friends near Granville in Schoolcraft on Detroit's west side. It was June 21st when suddenly someone opened fire. Jean Chambers was hit. He collapsed and died. Shot and killed in cold blood, he was only 17. Chambers' mother has not been able to sleep. She says she won't rest until police find her son's killer. I'm hurting and sad. Too many days has gone past and we don't know what happened to him. And only the people that left there with him, which is Anthony and Ty, um, Ken, the only two know what happened. And I'm here pleading today, please, somebody, would you come forward and let us know what exactly happened to my son.